Hello and welcome back to Taco About It Tuesday. I'm getting to stream today from the Sporter X Studios, and that is very exciting. Uh, it seems like it's been forever since I've been with you all. I've missed you so much, I have to say. Uh, it, and so it's good to be back, and I'm very excited to be with this much more professional setup. Look at me. Look how far I've come. These giant headphones. This is very fun. Uh, little Sporter X news. We have some promos that we're running. Seems like we're always running some promos, but sometimes some better than others. Uh, right now we have today our final day for the President's Day promo. Take advantage of that if it suits you best. 50 bucks off in orders of 250 or more. Even better than that, potentially, if you need it, we have a BOGO deal. You buy one pair of prescription eyewear, you get a second and a half off. That's a huge savings. For, for sure, especially if you are in the market for two. So definitely don't miss out on that if that suits you. Some uh, SporterX family updates. Happy birthday, Tim. And uh, I hope it was just the absolute best ever. It, it, it isn't today, but it happened since we last streamed. And also a happy belated to Rob. It's a good time. It's a good time for birthdays, that is for sure. And hopefully everyone had a fantastic Valentine's Day. You were able to uh, do something fun while staying safe. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Erin, and she is a cross-country cyclist and a very capable mountain biker. Uh, she has competed in in a, in 24-hour races. Can you imagine that? Riding for 24 hours straight? I certainly, I, I certainly can't. Uh, and she has a lot of other interesting things to talk about. And so I'd like to get her on and I'd like to chat. So can we get her on? Erin, where are you? Erin. Uh, <laughs> hi. I'm Hello. Here. Hi. And welcome. <laughs> thank you thank for you. having me. Oh, no. Thank you for joining us. It is awesome to get to to chat with you. Uh, and and I, I want to I wanna see what's going on with you. You've been doing a, a, a lot of stuff on the bike. That's for dang sure. Yeah. I've been yeah. having a lot of fun, you know, things are, are interesting this past year. Like when you say I'm a competitive cross country racer, I, I can't even identify with that right now. Cause I feel like it's been so long since I've been able to line up and, and race. Um, yeah. gosh, I haven't done any racing since Breck Epic 2019. So, um, wow. but I've been having a ton of fun on the bike and exploring local trails and, um, it's been really great. So I can't really complain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm excited to race again. And this year I'm actually going to do some Enduros, which is brand new to me. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was definitely one of my questions. I was just curious to know, you know, last year was very disruptive for really everyone. I don't know anybody mm -hmm. that was, that was uh, you know, saved from that. And so uh, that certainly changed a lot in your life. And it seems like it's gotten you more into mountain biking, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for years I have been traveling so much for work and, um, I just, I, I can't even remember being home for a full month. And, uh, <laughs> it's been amazing to be able to ride my bike this much. And, I probably have more fitness in February than I have in the last six years. Um, uh, and, <laughs> And it's kept, you know, with COVID, it's kept you, kept us in kind of small groups, right? So uh, yeah. I felt, I feel like I have a little bike family that I get to spend a lot of time with and have as much fun as I can during, yeah, what's some pretty crazy times. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That is, yeah, that's a cool side effect of that because you will get a lot closer to your core group, especially if you're used to traveling so much in life, uh, just in general to be you know, more landlocked or in one area, you're definitely going to grow much closer to your core group. And so that that's definitely a, a cool thing, I would say for sure. Uh, you work for Specialized, right? I do. I do. I'm a product what developer you, for uh, mountain bikes. Product developer. What is that job without <laughs> making you get too into the weeds? What does that look like? Product developer. That seems very broad, but it also seems like it could be very exciting. Uh, it's definitely very broad. Um, it's also <laughs> very exciting. Uh, one thing about yeah. specialize is you could really, um, you know, you may have a job title, but you can do a bunch of different jobs. I'd say, I, I'd say the best way to describe it is I'm a support a, in a supporting role for the product managers. So the, uh, talented guys I work with that, um, 
have uh, that manage product families such as the Enduro or the Stump Jumper or the Epic. I support them in small development projects. So whether that's creating uh, small parts for the bike or just helping get things in the system to get them, you know, to manufacturing. And then the, you know, it, that's kind of the more like, I wouldn't say boring, it's pretty exciting, but that's more yeah. of a technical side of my job. And then I also do rider insights, which is the other half of my job. So I connect with riders and get feedback and trends that help us develop future bikes. That's amazing. That has to be fun connecting with people. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's your passion and getting to connect with them about their passion yeah. and, and make a product even better. I imagine it means that you get to do a lot of testing yourself then too. I do, which is pretty yeah. cool. It's pretty cool. I do a lot of cool stuff that I can't talk about. <laughs> that's <it. laughs> very exciting. Very secretive. Yeah. That's, that's very cool. Yeah, it's uh, cool. It, and really probably even cooler than that is, this nonprofit that you've co-founded called Project Bike Love, which yeah. is amazing and something I would like to, to hear you talk more on. Absolutely. Um, it's my favorite thing in the world to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. um, it's, uh, gosh, it's such a, it's, uh, such a huge part of my life. Um, I created, uh, I didn't actually create it. Me and other people create it, but I, I was just a, uh, the one with the idea, the passion project, um, back in the end of 2014, I, um, was starting to create a community, um, just a community event. I really wanted to give back. I, I have, I love bikes. They've done so much for me and I really wanted to, to give back in a meaningful way. And, um, I could, this is a very long story, but the, what what ended up happening is through that I connected with amazing um, people in the southern in the SoCal riding community, and Project Bike Club was was born and it and it turned into a much bigger uh, dream than even what I had. And I think that that's kind of you know you I think like a lot of people I didn't really know what what was possible, and it took. Um, communicating with and networking with uh, a lot of other riders to develop something that we turned into a global organization. And um, we give bikes to impoverished women and children um, globally. We've done a lot of work in Paraguay. That's where the my co-founder Boleyn is from. I met her on a bike ride. Uh, it's, it's actually, I'll tell this story cause it's a real, it's a fun one. It's a, it's a short one, but I met her, uh, why, riding in um, uh, Whiting in Orange County, actually right across from, from Oakley. And we were on a group ride and I was sharing about Project Bike Love and we were climbing up Mustard. So if anyone knows that hill, it's a really steep hill out there. And we were just chatting the whole time. And she was like, wait, I want to hear this. And so um, we just kind of fell in love that day. And like, basically she's a, she's a doctor for Doctors Without Borders. So she's just like a humanitarian at the core. And and um, through our conversations and our friendship, that's how Project Bike Club was born. That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> I think we have a, a little short video. I don't know if uh, there's going to be uh, any repeating there, but maybe we could take a moment to. Yeah, yeah let's let's shoot that My name over. Aaron McCann, and um, I ride bikes. Well, at this point, it is so far beyond just just a hobby it's really part of my life it's my passion and it's turned into my philanthropy it was like a very fast escalation like 50k rides and then I got in a 100k ride and then I decided to do 12 hour racing and then 24 hour racing and so it just escalated pretty quick <laughs> I always knew that bikes were empowering you know why wouldn't I take what I love and I give just a little bit of that back. We really didn't know how much it was going to, how important and how impactful it was going to be until we actually got to Paraguay and delivered our first bikes. You know, these bikes give the, these, the beneficiaries, these women, so much time back in their lives. They give them the ability to cover more ground and make more money and give time back to their families like it's 
it impacts them, it impacts their families, their entire communities, and you know, their, in all of us. My name is Erin McCann and I am inspired. That's amazing. Now I'm inspired. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. You, you, it's, it's so easy to forget uh, how much things that we take for granted mean to so many people out there that have so very much less. And it's, it's hard because it can be daunting and overwhelming. But that's that's incredible what you're doing. So a huge heart and amazing, amazing work. Uh, hopefully. Yeah that just grows and grows. Uh, how did last year affect that? It was, it's hard. We've done, um, since that video was made, we've done a ton of uh, work in other areas, uh, such as the Navajo Nation in Indian Wells, Arizona. And they were hit really hard with COVID. Uh, uh, it's heartbreaking. Um, and we've been doing work there for the last two years and are just, absolutely in love with these women in the community. Um, our contact there, who's just the, she is a boss, Claudia. She is just, she, I mean, that woman handles everything and is just such a stand for the girls and, and children and women in that community. It's so, she inspires me. Like, she's like, why I, you know, do what I do. And um, we're not able to go there. I mean, we were actually there a year ago now, and then they basically shut down about you know, a month after we did our last delivery. So um, we aren't able to go and connect. And that's such an important part of what we do. Like we want our, our, our donors to know that like we go and, you know, we're there, we deliver these bikes, you know, exactly where your money's going, you know, exactly where your donated bikes going, all of that. Um, and then we can't do that. So how, you know, how do we, figure out how to help our communities um, without being able to physically be there. And yeah. we were able to get a trailer and a bunch of bikes donated to Claudia so she could continue her mission on the reservation. And she started a mobile bike repair so <sighs> she could go and help all of the women and children fix their bikes. Um, Gosh, and they started racing again. And so now these kids are racing. I mean, gosh, ah, I could go on forever. It gives me chills. It's so amazing what has happened in that community since our partnership. Um, amazing. We have kids racing bikes. Moms are riding with their kids. Dads can't believe, you know, how their families are coming together because of it. Yeah. Um, just whether it's physical, mental, it's just they're, it's really, oh, these pictures even just make my heart melt. Um <laughs> That's Claudia. Oh, and we've just, uh, you know, Rock and Road Cyclery in Orange County has been such a big partner of ours. They've really helped make this stuff happen for us. I mean, more, they came on, they were the first people to come on and be like, yeah, we're going to support you. And they have been with us the entire way. Um, the bike community is so inspiring. I mean, it's <laughs> the way that people come together to help others just kind of like you said, like we do take it for granted. This is a hobby for us. We spend a lot of our time and money on it, but these bikes are life changing for people, you know, like $250 or less for a bike for, for a lot of these people. And it, it provides them safe and reliable independent transportation that they just wouldn't otherwise have. And gosh, it's just such a, yeah. a, a beautiful thing to, to see. So yeah, absolutely. And just imagining, I mean, being a parent and seeing if I were in that position, what I'd be doing for my, my, my own children. That's incredible. And I, ma I imagine that there uh, is a way that people can easily and clearly contribute uh, through this website. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you go to the website, it's, it's super easy to donate or on our Instagram, Amazing. we're uh, always Amazing. running different um, uh, fundraising events. So yeah, it's like I said, it's 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 been hard. We can't wait to get back out there and and yeah. be with be with our beneficiaries. Uh, my co-founder is actually in Honduras right now on a mission for Doctors Without Borders, and we were able to donate bikes spur of the moment to some beneficiaries Amazing. out there that really need them. So it's just we we're doing 
We're doing a lot. We we donated bikes to healthcare workers in Paraguay that needed to be able to get to the different, um, uh, yeah, the different sites for the yeah. quarantine. So it's we've done as we've we've done as much as we can, I guess, with the yeah. the parameters we're in now. Sounds like you've done a ton. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, really, really amazing. Uh, yeah, I would encourage everyone to check that out. ProjectBikeLove.org. Really amazing stuff you guys are doing there and making yeah. a huge difference uh, in in the world. And that's incredible. Uh, and obviously we could go on and on about that, but yeah. I want to talk to you about getting some eyewear. Uh, awesome. Obviously <laughs> you're amazing. You're doing a lot of really cool stuff, but also you are a prescription wearer. And I so am. that is very relevant. <laughs> <laughs> to sport RX. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and so uh, I noticed that you have an appreciation for eyewear. That is something that I, I picked up on. Uh, you are also a big fan of big eyewear. You're a big <laughs> fan of shield designs. You're a big fan of, uh, yeah, very, very yes. bold uh, and, and big coverage. Uh, some of the frames that I've picked out that I've seen uh, on your Instagram, you have the flight jacket, you have the S3, you have the Sutro, you have the Speedcraft SL, you have the Jawbreaker, some sort of main <laughs> link looking pair. I saw you in the Radar EV. Uh, you got some some snow goggles, uh, MX goggles. So uh, a lot of things that, that I would love to contribute to and, and grow your collection, but we're talking prescription because we're Sporter X. Unfortunately, yeah. none of those styles that I just mentioned with minor exceptions can be done in prescription. And so I would like to get you in something that you will be able to actually see properly in and will be really appropriate and work really well for mountain biking in particular. Uh, it, it does seem like, I mean, how much do you actually ride with your prescription? How often? All the time. So for basically for, for a long time, I just didn't ride with prescription. And about a year ago, I felt like I was going a lot slower and a lot more <laughs> careful than I used to. And I thought something yeah. was wrong with me. I thought I was just scared, you know, like I was like, I have like, what is going on? I'm afraid all the time. And then someone's like, do you think maybe it's because you don't wear your glasses? And I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see. And so I went, I got contacts and oh my gosh, okay. I was like a new there person, but the contacts, I have issues with my eyes watering really bad, uh -huh. which is a reason why I really wanted to go to a prescription, like transition sort of sunglasses. Cause I was thinking yeah. maybe the contacts were caught. Like if I get debris and then one time I had dirt go right into the contact, it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> it has yeah. it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and some things that people don't consider, obviously there, there's the obvious that, you know, they, they can dry out, they can be uncomfortable. They can be a bit of a headache. Cause I imagine you're probably at least in your left eye wearing a toric lens. Is that right? Cause it's for astigmatism. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I and, uh, I am primarily astigmatism. And so I know they're weighted, they have to be in yes. the correct axis and you blink and they twist a little bit and then you're not seeing as clear as you can. So there are a lot yeah. of downsides, but even more than that, there could be a time if you rely heavily on your contacts, you can get an eye infection and you go to the doctor and they take care of it. They say, you know, antibiotics, whatever, but also no contacts for three, mm -hmm. four plus weeks. And so then what do you do if you don't have the, you know, your backup pair, then you're just out for that long. And so, exactly. uh, really, really good to have, uh, some, something that's a backup, but at least good to hear. Cause I was imagining you were going blind when you were wearing all these <laughs> very cool frames. Uh, but it sounds like you're not. uh, so I, based on, I, I had a couple of frames in mind, but I, I, I have it settled down to one because I think it's absolutely perfect for you. Uh, but first let's pull up your prescription. Okay. Just so I can talk about that a little bit. Some opticians insights here being an optician, uh, just to my core, I was just talking to my wife about this. She's like, you've been doing this like forever. I'm like, yeah, I, I, had, I guess I have. Uh, so yes, you have, like we see here, a relatively minor prescription. It's not mm -hmm. too terribly strong, uh, you know, like some of the prescriptions that I see, but so much better with your with correction, uh, especially in that left eye is what I was talking about. You're all astigmatism. Mm -hmm. And so that's just going to, uh, for those of you unaware of astigmatism, it means that essentially it doesn't fall in the nearsighted or farsighted category, it's just your eyes are blurry no matter what. 
just across the board, always blurry without correction. And so uh, definitely a nice thing to have correction in. <laughs> uh, nor is, and then also I see uh, a little bit of an ad, which would be for progressives. That's uh, called presbyopia is something that's an age related issue that makes it so that your vision <laughs> is more troublesome. You are in the early stages of that. And so we can forego that, but it's, uh, I think you mentioned that you have already had some experience with progressives, right? Yes. Which is good yes. because I always recommend people that once they're in that stage in early stages of presbyopia to try progressives, the sooner you try, the easier it is to get used to them. And even you said there was a bit of a learning curve. There was. And, and there are downsides of progressives. There's no way around it. Uh, but the sooner you start, the lower that ad is, the easier it is to get used to that. And once you get used to it, as your ad gets stronger, as your your condition of presbyopia gets uh, worse for lack of better terms. It's just something that happens to everyone. Uh, it'll be easier. It'll be a smoother transition. And so I always recommend people do that. But yeah. with that all being said, uh, you're going to be just fine with single vision for this pair, especially since you have experience with progressives already. Uh, and I think the absolute perfect pair for you is going to be the Oakley portal because yeah. they are big, they are bold, they are a term that Oakley loves to use, disruptive. It's a disruptive style. Ooh, I agree. There's nothing me. really... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> nice. There's really nothing uh, on the market, and I can say, like I said, I've been doing this forever. There, There is nothing really on the market that is quite like this. Uh, not only are they really cool looking, but you have lots of performance features to them. They have a mild wrap, so they're going to be give you good protection. They have grip on the nose. They have grip in the temples. They are absolutely helmet compatible with that straight back and uh, slimmer profile temple. Really an amazing frame. Uh, and I think will be absolutely perfect for you. I you love agree? them. I nice. agree. I agree. Definitely. Nice. I'm good at my job. Okay. You are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk color real quick. What frame color are you liking in this? And you know, I like a good black frame usually. I'm pretty, yeah. it kind of goes with everything or white. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So let, yeah, let's keep it simple and we'll go with the, uh, we'll go with that black. You cannot oh, go like wrong no. with a black frame uh, or even, oh, actually the carbon. How do you feel about that carbon? Oh, it's a very yeah. dark. Yeah. It's not quite black, but it's very dark and it gives the effect of black functionally. I like that. Uh, and yeah, it being very versatile and working with just about everything, but a little bit different. Okay. So I like yeah, that. I like that. So let's, yeah. So let's go with the yeah. carbon and then we're talking single vision. I want to get you into a mountain biking specific lens. Normally what I would think to recommend would be Oakley's prism trail. Cause it is an amazing lens, incredible lens and it's Oakley's uh, mountain biking specific lens, but it's not transitions. It's a fixed tint. Mm -hmm. And I know you want a little bit more versatility out of your lens and you like the idea of a transitions. And yeah. for any of you people watching right now that have watched in the past, especially really anytime I talk to a mountain biker, you might be a little bored right now because I am going to recommend the same thing I keep recommending because really it is, my favorite lens for mountain biking that we do. Uh, and it is still as of yet, and I will fix this, I promise, a secret menu item. <laughs> uh, when we talk lens material, I want to get you set up for Trivex because Trivex is the best lens material, optically speaking. You get all the same benefits as polycarbonate, which is lightweight, extremely impact resistant, uh, but you have much better clarity out of the Trivex. It is a little bit thicker but with your prescription, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. And yeah. so we'll do Trivex and this lens, which still as of yet doesn't have a name. We've talked happy camper. We've talked maybe something a little more mountain biking centric, but we haven't landed on a name. We're going to figure it out. All of you, I promise, but it's a sport optimized lens. It will live in the mountain biking category. Uh, and the, the recipe for this, it is a transitions base where it is going to be the signature, the new signature, signature eight, doesn't mean anything to you, but anybody who pays attention to transitions, uh, it's the best that they currently have. Uh, and it's amazing. And it will have a base tint of a light to medium vermilion. And that is going to help to 
boost colors. It's going to help to boost contrast. It's going to make it easier to read the terrain. Depth perception cues are going to be enhanced. Everything about it is amazing for the sport. Uh, and it will then, at its lightest, non-activated state, be that tint. And then as it is exposed to UV, because that's how this transitions work, is it's just UV exposure. So if there's no UV exposure, it won't change. But with UV exposure, it will change and it will get to a gray tint. And then we will put, and that gray is building off of that because that vermilion is still there, building off of that vermilion. So you still have that color enhancement. And then we put a flash black mirror on it. And that is going to help, especially in those excessively bright conditions, that mirror is going to kick up and really turn on. Technically, it's always there, but when it doesn't have as much of a tint backing, it's not as... Uh, it doesn't function as much Got as it, it does when the lens is as dark as it gets. And so uh, very soon we're going to have an actual representation visually of this lens, but it's amazing. Everyone that we have uh, workshopped this lens with has absolutely loved it. And I think it is going to be the perfect setup for you. Awesome. So what I'm hearing is that it's going to make me a better writer. <laughs> yeah, oh, 100%. <laughs> Got it. Okay, Absolutely I'm in. Absolutely <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> I uh, like this. Yes. Let yeah. See, you have, know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you're going to have all that coverage. You're going to have all that protection. Yes. You're not going to have to worry about your contacts drying out or fussing Perfect. with the toric lenses. And I'll look cool, right? <laughs> and you will look freaking super cool. Awesome. <laughs> yes, absolutely super cool. Okay. Perfect. Sweet. So I want to get you set up with that. And uh, we have uh, had this where we've revisited with with some people we've set up with with eyewear and in the event that something happens with them, they're not. Boop, 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 boop. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, okay. I was like, I got to take the show now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, we're perfect time to, to screw things up right when I'm wrapping it all up and we're, we're finishing. Uh, we will get this all figured out. Uh, but anyway, yes, I think the absolute perfect setup for you. And I'm excited to hear how you do with it because uh, if they don't work for you, we're going to take care of you just like we take care of everyone. All of our sport our extras get taken care of. Um, okay, so the only thing, thank you so much again for taking the time and talking with us. Everything you're doing is amazing. Uh, thank you so much for everything you're putting into Project Bike Love. It's incredible. Um, and uh, it, I can't wait to get you set up for the best pair of eyewear you've ever worn mountain biking. Thank you, I'm so excited, you have no idea. A good yeah. eyewear changes your whole ride. So yeah, it, that's no joke. It, yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Uh, so thank you again for doing this with you. Uh, those of you who have been waiting, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but hopefully you already knew. We have a promo that we are running that will save you flat twenty percent off of anything and everything you order on Sport RX, and it is Aaron twenty E R I N two zero, and that is going to be running for two weeks. So take advantage of that. If there is anything that you are in the market for uh, that doesn't fall under the category of a better promo, whatever, amazing promo that you can take advantage of there. Uh, ring the bell. We're still offering swag. If you ring the bell and you share this and you send that to us, then we will send you some swag, whether it be a hat, which I didn't bring, or a shirt, or whatever. Just reach out to us. We'd love to hook you all up. And uh, thank you again, Aaron. You are amazing. And for all of you out there, for all your eyewear needs, we are SportRx. Thank you so much. Thank you.